Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you a simple proof that shows that E is equal to zero. As I go through this proof, see if you can find the mistake. And at the very end of this video, I will do my best to explain what the mistake is. So we'll start simply by writing down the number E. So we have E. And E is the same thing as the square root of E squared. That's because when you take the square root of e squared, you just get e. This is a simple fact, should not be shocking. Um, as just a, another example, if you have the square root of three squared, you would simply get three. So no issues there. So square root of e squared is e. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to break this up in a really clever way. So this is really the square root of, and we can write e squared as e times e. And that's also okay because there's really a one here and a one here. And so when you multiply these two numbers, because the bases are the same, you add the exponents. One plus one is equal to two. So e times e is e squared. Again, no issues, no issues there. And the next step, it's a little bit funky, but should be okay. So we have the square root of so now we're going to introduce a negative sign here. So instead of writing this as e times e, which is e squared, we're gonna write it as negative e times and then negative e. So negative e times negative e is going to be e squared. So, and again, the negative and the negative, negative one times negative one is positive one. So this is the same as what's up here. So still all is good. In the next step, we're going to break this up into two square roots, which again is okay. So this is the square root of negative e times the square root of negative e, just like that. So the square root of negative e times the square root of negative e is just the square root of negative e times negative e. It's just breaking, up, breaking it up into two square roots. For this next step, you might need some extra knowledge. So I'm gonna come over here to the side and just refresh your memory if you don't know, or maybe you already know. I is equal to the square root of negative one. And so I squared is equal to negative one. And we're gonna use this in the problem now. So this is super, super useful. So how do you deal with the square root of negative E? Well, most of the time when people see this, um, they'll simply write uh, i square root of e. Let me actually come over here to the side just to justify it so I can convince you that everything here is 100% correct, which of course it's not, right? We're showing that e equals zero, so there must be a mistake somewhere at some point. <laughs> so if we have the square root of negative e, we can write this as the square root of negative one times e, Right, because negative one times e is negative e. And this is the same thing as the square root of negative one times the square root of e. Just simply breaking this uh, square root into two square roots, breaking it up into two separate pieces. And the square root of negative one is i, so we have i square root e. So most people, they never show this work. Um, typically when this is taught in school, uh, people just say, hey, you know, let's just go to the next step, which would be here. It would just be i square root e, i square root e. So typically when you see like something like this, you go straight to the i. So that's typically what you do instead of having to go through all of this work. In fact, some textbooks have this as like a formula, like they'll put a number here and they'll, they'll give you the formula. Just put, put an i there when you see the negative. It's a good idea. Okay, so let's keep going. So i times i is something special, it's i squared. So this is equal to i squared. And the square root of e times the square root of e is just the square root of e squared, which is just e, which is just e, right? It's because if you multiply this and this, you're gonna get this here, which is squared, and that's going to be um, just e. So this is e, okay? And then um, I squared is negative one, so this is negative one times e, and negative one times e is just negative e. 
So we have that E is equal to negative E. So that's our conclusion. So we have that E is equal to negative E. So now what we can do is we can just add E to both sides of this equation. So plus E plus E, these cancel. E plus E is 2E, and that's equal to 0. And then we can simply divide both sides by 2. Right, 2 is a positive number. There's no issue with the division. And so we've basically shown um, that E is equal to the number 0, which cannot be true. Otherwise, the universe would explode. So <laughs> where is the mistake, right? Where is the mistake in a problem like this? Let's just go through it one more time, see if you can spot it, and uh, then I will attempt to explain uh, where the mistake is. So we started with e, and we said it was equal to the square root of e squared. And that's okay, right? Because when you take the square root of a positive number squared, you, you just get the positive number. Here I have an example with 3. The square root of 3 squared is just simply 3. Right? The square root of 9 is 3. 9 has two square roots, by the way, positive and negative. But when we write this symbol, we want the positive square root. That's why you put a 3. And then here, um, e squared is simply e times e. There's no issues here because we're basically multiplying a number by itself, and so you just add the exponents so you get e squared. This next step, some people might think it's a bit tricky, but really uh, it's the same as this one up here, right? I mean, in fact, I'll even justify it up here. If you have negative e times negative e, that's really negative 1 times e, negative 1 times e, and then negative 1 times negative 1 is just 1. And then so you just get e times e, right? You just combine these two. And then that's just going to be uh, e times e, which is right here. So it's the same thing. So all of this is certainly okay. And then here, uh, again, uh, we're just breaking it up. You know, you can break up square roots. So we get the square root of negative e times the square root of negative e. And then going from here to here, I showed the justification down here. Um, basically, um, we broke up the negative e into negative 1 times e and then broke it up into two square roots and then used the fact that i is the square root of negative 1. Most people, when they learn algebra, they know just to go here. i times i is i squared. And then the square root of e times the square root of e is the square root of e squared, which is e. So we end up with negative e, uh, right, i squared e, which is negative 1 times e, which is negative e. So e, which is up here, is equal to negative e. And then we added e to both sides. So negative e plus e is 0, e plus e is 2e. We divided by 2, we showed that e is equal to 0. So where is the mistake? Well, I guess I should tell you at some point. So now I'm going to tell you the mistake is right here, right? You're not allowed to do this. You're not allowed to break up square roots like that. Typically, when you uh, learn algebra, you know, you do stuff like that all the time, right? If you have, for example, you know, the square root of... Um, uh, I don't know, 75, right? You say that's the square root of 25 times the square root of 3. And because uh, 25 times 3 is 75, so that's going to be um, 5 square root of 3, right? So no issues there. The reason there's no issues is because all of these numbers are positive. So in general, uh, if both numbers are negative, um, you're not allowed to do that, right? You you can't necessarily do that. And why? Because you end up with nonsensical results like we just did, right? E is certainly not equal to zero. So in general, if you have the square root of A times B, this is equal to the square root of A times the square root of B if at least one of, bad handwriting here, AB is non-negative. So in other words, um, they, it'll work as long as both aren't negative. So if they're both negative, it, it doesn't work. As just, a, as just a concrete example, let's say you have 1, right? You can say that's the square root of 1. Whoops, square root of 1. And that's the same thing as negative 1 times negative 1, right? You can just create more nonsensical results. These are both negative, so you're not allowed to break it up. But if you do, if you do, this is what happens. And you get this, and you get this. And you get this, so you show 1 equals negative 1. Same thing I just did, except I introduced the E. So same issue, right? So this step here is no good. So something to keep in mind uh, when you're doing math, kind of a fun trick to show you that E is equal to 0. 
If you have any comments at all about this video, uh, don't forget to leave a comment below. I hope it's been helpful and maybe you can show some people and see if they can figure it out. Good luck.